brokenness, loneliness, healing, restoration, tears, and smiles. A reunion four years in the making has finally taken place, and it was every bit worth the wait. So let's talk about it. Hey everyone, it's Charles. How are you today? Lily, Gladion, and Lusamine's quest to find their missing father and husband Moan has finally come to a head. And holy hoppips, did it ever pull everyone's heartstrings and get the tears flowing. So today's plan is to 1. Establish why Moan and Lily and company's quest to find him even matters. And 2. Break down the masterpiece that was Pokemon Journeys episode 111. And as always, it is going to be a dandy, so kindly subscribe for one liter of goat milk delivered directly to your door. Click that like button for the tube algorithm them because that seems like it would be a nice thing to do, and let's jump right in. The Moan storyline kicked off way, way, way back in episode 49 of the Sun and Moon anime. So to briefly refresh our memories on who exactly Lily's father is, what happened to him, and the aftermath of that happening, they will all be tied together in Pokemon Journeys episode 111. Here is the gist of Moan's story. When Moan was younger, he moved to Alola to research ultra wormholes. And there, he founded the Aether Foundation together with his wife Lusamine, and they lived happily ever after. Or they would have lived happily ever after, except that one day while doing his research, Moan was sucked into an ultra wormhole, and thought to be dead thereafter. And it wasn't until years later when Gladion and Lily searched the mysterious mists of Tapu Fini, wherein it was said that people could reunite with loved ones who had passed on, that, well, they could not find Moan anywhere in the mist, and Hapu told the siblings that this could mean that their father was still out there somewhere, and very much alive. Soon after, the Aether Foundation and Lily's family began the search for their missing founder and father. This plotline could have easily been handled as a one-off afterthought, but instead the importance of Moan's character was slowly and thoughtfully built out over the second half of the Sun and Moon anime, in a way that added depth and intrigue to the cast. We saw how his supposed passing left the family in disarray, with a devastated Lusamine getting lost in her research and becoming far too protective of her daughter. We also saw McDonald's head find Moan Zoroark on Melimeli Island, whereupon it conjured up precious memories of the past in which Moan is seen as a family man who loved his children, and Zoroark later battled alongside Gladio in the Manalo Conference Finals. We also saw Lily discover his Z-Ring and put it to good use. And of course, Lily discovered the inactive shiny Magayarna that Moan had purchased at an antique store with the intention of repairing it so that Lily would have a friend to play with. A Magayarna who, once reactivated, would become an essential ally in the family's quest to track down their father. And in the final episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon, Lily, Gladion, and Lusamine departed on a journey to find Moan, promising to return once they had located him. The character dynamics of Lily's family were one of the truly strong points of the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime, and I was so happy to see that their quest had not been forgotten when Lana read out a letter from Lily in episode 37 of Pokemon Journeys, and at long last in episode 111, a story thread 200 episodes in the making has finally reached its conclusion. So what exactly happened? Pokemon Journeys episode 111 kicks off with Ash, Go, and Chloe heading to the Crown Tundra to investigate the appearance of an unusual Pokemon. But the reason this episode was able to do so so much, so so well, is because the writers almost entirely sidelined the trio. Apart from one big moment later on, instead devoting nearly all of the screen time to Lily and her family and their struggle, which played out like this. In short, as the trio heads to the Crown Tundra, elsewhere we see Lily, Lusamine, and Gladion on a ship pushing through icy water on their quest to find Moan. Lily plays mother and daughter from the Pokemon Sun and Moon OST on piano, a piece that will become particularly significant in this episode. She plays it as memories of their father come flooding back to them, and let's not mince words, it is a truly powerful scene with melancholy so thick that you could cut it with a sword hanging stupidly out of a dog's mouth. And then, all of a sudden, Magiarna perks up, indicating that Moan is near. Lily, Gladion, and Lusamine disembark and head for the mountains, braving a snowstorm and spending the night in the wilderness as they close in on Moan's location. The following morning, they finally arrive at a small cabin where Lily immediately recognizes her somewhat aged father and runs into his arms. However, he does not recognize her, and he does not understand why she knows his name. And even as Lusamine arrives and explains everything, he can only look on at the three in confusion. Lusamine is devastated 
devastated that the love of her life does not even remember who she is, and she collapses into the snow. And in the opening minutes of the episode, we had already moved from melancholy to joy to disbelief to sadness, with the amnesia twist begging the question, what exactly did happen to Moan? Regardless of his confusion, Moan invites the three into his cabin for a meal, and upon entry, we hear the same mother and daughter tune on piano that Lily had been playing earlier on the boat. When asked who the pianist is, Moan explains that it is his daughter, Lily. Hold on a second. Lily? At this point, I was wondering, were we about to get the just waiting on a friend treatment? Or was this moan simply a different moan from a parallel dimension? Not only had episode 111 already pivoted through a whirlwind of emotions, but it had also cracked open another mystery to solve. Sure enough, when we enter the next room, we see a dead ringer for Lily playing the piano. But something is off, and when mother and daughter ends on a sudden note, hurling the room into an eerie silence, Lily transforms into its true form. A shiny nihilo who disappears just as Gladion is ready to rush into battle. This was a real shocker, and you may recall that it was a Nihilago that caused Lily such deep childhood trauma, trauma so deep that it left her unable to even touch Pokemon for years to come, and that very, very bad things happened to Lusamine when a Nihilago fused with her, and it was little wonder that the expressions of everyone in the room except for memoryless moan twisted from morbid curiosity to tense horror in a heartbeat. Lusamine then sits down to talk with Moan in another room in hopes that she can learn more about his condition and even jog his memory, while Gladion and Lily begin to explore the house and start to notice some very strange things. Firstly, all of the windows have been dirtied beyond reason. Secondly, all of the mirrors have been taken down and hidden away. Thirdly, we see a bundle of dried lilies hanging on the wall. And fourthly, when Lily is rooting through a set of drawers and finds Moan's worn out Aether Foundation clothes, she also picks up a mirror through which she sees the reflection of an otherwise invisible Nihilago about to attack her from behind. Only for a familiar voice to shout out Iron Tail as Pikachu bursts through the window to defend Lily from incoming jellyfish lasers. Nice timing, as always, Mr. Ketchum. Given that this is the only significant thing in the entire episode that the trio achieved, it probably would have been more meaningful to simply relegate this role to Gladion's Silvalli, but at the very least, Go did not try to catch the thing. Elsewhere, we see Lusamine having a tough conversation with moan as she tries to bring him back from within, whereupon Nihilago reappears to attack her, just as Gladion bursts through the door and his Zorark tackles Nihilago. But before Nihilago can disappear, Lily runs in and surprises everyone by thanking it for protecting her father all this time, and a conversation full of wholesome flashbacks and big feels ensues. The gist of it is that when Moan was dragged through the Ultra Wormhole all those years ago, it was indeed Nihilago who saved him and brought him back to his world. And since his most powerful memories at the time were those of Lily, Nihilago decided to essentially become Lily for him, in order to nurse him back to health and ease his mind. And yet, in the process, it comes to love being together with Moan so much that it doesn't want him to recall his memories and leave it behind for his real family. If you recall the dried lilies that we saw hanging from the wall earlier in the episode, we now learn that Moan had given these to Nihilago as a present. Metaphorically speaking, they may represent the immortalization of a memory of Lily, a memory that is merely a withered shade of the real thing, but the fact that Nihilago has held onto them also demonstrates its love and admiration of Moan. All of this is represented through a series of allusions and flashbacks into Nihilago's and Moan's pasts, and we now understand Nihilago's motivations for hiding all of the mirrors in the house and for lashing out at both Lily and Lusamine. In particular, the mirrors would reveal the truth of what Nihilago really is, an ultra beast from another world. Indeed, the mirrors are a metaphor for the truth, and when Gladion shows Moan his own reflection in the mirror, the truth about his past is revealed and his memories of his family come flooding back to him one after the other in a beautiful Beautiful montage. You really have to see the scene itself, not to mention the entire episode, just to appreciate how beautifully it was all put together. And the crown jewel of it all was when Moan finally regains full control of his memories, simply stares at the face of his wife, says one word, Lusamine, and she bursts into tears of joy. After years and years of anime time, not to mention years and years of real life time, the family was together once again, and we couldn't have asked for a more beautiful conclusion to the storyline. The icing on the cake is that the family realizes that if it were not for Nihilago rescuing and taking care of Moan, then their family would have remained broken forever. As such, they offer to take it home in an Ultra Beast Ball as a new member of the family. It happily accepts their invitation, and the episode ends in smiles. 
Pokemon Journeys episode 111 was a brilliant stroke to conclude the long-running Moan storyline and an absolute landmark episode in the Pokemon anime. The emotion, the airtight pacing, the tight writing, the atmosphere, and the big narrative payoff to a long-running plot thread at the end. It was a love letter to Pokemon fans that hit as raw as it hit different. And I absolutely loved it, but how about you?